And meanwhile, the election that set all this stuff into motion itself is not over yet. The certification of the vote in the Georgia governor's race between Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams, that has been delayed until at least Friday. As the campaign of Stacey Abrams says there are tens of thousands of votes left to be counted, but the office of Secretary of State Brian Kemp, who is the Republican candidate against Abrams, his office says that far fewer votes remain and they're definitely not enough to get Abrams to a recount or to a runoff. Uh, the wrangling over this election, this undecided election in Georgia now, it is happening in the courts. It's also happening in protests like these that resulted in arrests at the Georgia state capitol, including of at least one state lawmaker. Now, in Florida, there are recounts underway in three statewide races, including the state agriculture commissioner, the U.S. Senate race, and the governor's race. The deadline for the machine recount in Florida is tomorrow. It looks like they will probably hit that deadline, but, but court hearings happen today in Florida. There will be more court hearings tomorrow. There are multiple lawsuits on both sides of this issue, both statewide and in specific counties, including a bizarre allegation today in which, I kid you not, Republicans accuse Democrats of deliberately advising Democratic voters to send in their ballots after the deadline so those Democratic ballots wouldn't be counted. Why would the Democrats want to do that? How is that a nefarious scheme on the part of the Democrats? Uh, choose your own adventure, I don't know. But there's a, a couple of things you should know about how this is proceeding in Florida right now. We're coming up against that deadline recount, uh, that re deadline for the recount tomorrow. But there's a, a couple of things, I think, to see from a sort of wider lens here about what's happening in Florida as we come up against that deadline tomorrow, and especially as we focus on that Senate recount, which is an exceedingly close race, and obviously where the ultimate balance of power in the U.S. Senate will hang in the balance in terms of, uh, in, in terms of who ultimately wins. Now, as you may have seen, President Trump um, and the Republican Senate candidate in Florida, Rick Scott, and the Republican Party nationally, they're all now exclusively making this one argument over and over and over again. Their whole approach to what's going on in Florida is this argument that the only reason there's a recount, the only reason it's close, the only reason that Rick Scott might not win is rampant voter fraud, is illegal activity by the Democrats, Democrats stealing the election. That is their unified single argument about what's happening in Florida now. Now, to state the obvious, that is not setting the conditions for the Republicans ever accepting the outcome of these elections in Florida if they don't end up winning them, right? That is a big, hairy deal for our democracy in general. But it's also what we worried might happen with Trump in 2016, had he not won the presidential election against Hillary Clinton. You might remember in the lead up to the 2016 election, this, this flamboyant Trump campaign associate, a former, Manif uh, a former Paul Manafort business partner named Roger Stone, he formed a political organization called Stop the Steal. And you might have seen press about it in advance of the 2016 election. One of the things they said they were going to do is that they were going to do their own basically fake exit polling after the presidential election in case Trump lost. Because they'd want to be able to show in their fake exit polls that really Trump won and the whole thing had been stolen. And that could be a basis for contesting Hillary Clinton's legitimacy as president. That plan by Stop the Steal and Roger, St Roger Stone happened to dovetail exactly with what the Russian military intelligence campaign that targeted our election planned to do in the event of a Trump loss as well. You might remember in the intelligence community assessment about Russians, R Russia's election interference, it said explicitly that Russian intelligence planned to shift its messaging if Trump lost and Clinton won, to say that the Democrats had stolen the election and Trump was the real winner. The idea was that would sow chaos in the United States. It would undercut Clinton's legitimacy as president, hopefully in an ongoing way. It could potentially even lead to political violence in the United States. According to the intelligence community assessment of what Russia did to interfere with our election, that was Russia's 2016 plan if Trump didn't win. It was also the stop the steal Roger Stone plan. Well, ultimately, Trump did win, um, but the special counsel's office started looking into what exactly happened in the campaign between the Trump camp and the Russian interference campaign. And as part of that investigation, political entities that Roger Stone created around the Trump campaign started getting subpoenaed, as did lots of the people who worked for them. 
Stone himself right now is widely believed to be awaiting his own indictment by Robert Mueller. But the angry Republican protests outside the elections offices in Florida right now, they are being organized under that same Stop the Steal banner that Roger Stone for the Trump campaign and apparently Russian intelligence both prepped in 2016 in case Trump hadn't won the presidential election. They didn't end up having to use it in 2016, but they're trying it on now to see how it works in Florida. And as far as we can tell, it's not just the same signage and the same slogan, at least on the Republican side, it appears to be the same people personally who are involved in trying to pull this off. So you gave out the stickers yesterday. You gave out the stickers yesterday. Yes, yes, we you didn't tell me last night you guys worked for Roger Stone. Yeah. Yeah. No, Roger, Roger's yeah. a good friend. He's a good friend. Look, well, you are good, good friends. Good friend. yeah. Is that the extent to which you're working for him? Just as friends? Who are you? I'm, we met last night. I'm the MSNBC producer. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm different in the day. No, 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 no. I mean, Roger's a good friend. He's kind of a, yeah. a mentor. You know, he's mentored a lot of people, but he's a freedom fighter. Did you talk to Roger today about coming to Broward? I don't know. That's not really. Yeah, I spoke to him. The election's consequences are still unfolding. The election itself is still happening. The playbook for how to try to declare the election results invalid, to try to declare the election stolen by Democrats, that is what we're seeing right now is something very much like what was developed in 2016 that they never had to put in place because Trump won. But they do appear to be putting it in place, at least in Florida now, in places where Trump allies are still facing recounts. Hold on, more to come. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.